man. Hopefully, this is a 15 minute video, so, um, already not looking good. Hey there, guys, welcome back to Fat Boss TV. Today, we're looking at the final boss in the Eternal okay. Palace, Queen Azara. Okay. So, to start off, we didn't get to test this encounter as much as the others in the instance, and the fight was different each time we did test it, so our Alrighty. footage is pretty limited. But regardless of that little disclaimer, we have a relatively good idea of how this encounter works, and this video should give you some what useful information fuck? for when you actually see this boss in the upcoming weeks. So the boss has four phases what and two fuck intermissions, is this? and from what we saw, most of them are pretty difficult. The fight mainly revolves around ancient wards. There are three of these active at the start of the fight, and their stored power is shown in a new UI element. Throughout the fight- Wait, is the ancient ward the thing that's holding the Zoth in place? Look at look at where they're no. at. Look at where they're at on the minimap. It's called Dude. the last prison. And, yeah, and one of the phases is called- uh, like, this palace is a prison or some shit like that. If you look in the fucking book. What the fuck? I'm looking right now. Okay, I'm gonna scroll all the way down. Uh, Ashara. Uh, my palace is a prison. Yeah. Ashara turns her full force upon the raid. Players must contend with Ashara while attempting to keep the Titan console under control. Dude. This is it. We are, we are going to free Nazoth. This is, a this, is, this is a mistake going here. Yeah, this was the biggest mistake we, as players, have ever made. Yeah, that that this is bad. Uh, okay, all right, we'll keep going. Various mechanics will cause these wards to lose power. Now, if a single ward is powered down, the raid will start taking pretty heavy ticking damage. Okay. And if all wards are powered down, then you'll get a catastrophic failure, completely wiping the raid. Now the wards can be recharged by having players stand in the middle of them. This does, however, apply a stacking debuff. That's actually to the pretty player, fucking cool. Reducing their maximum health by 10 percent. I mean, the stack. boss fight area is now, awesome. The amount of players you need per phase to soak changes as the fight progresses, okay. eventually requiring pretty much everyone to stand within them to keep their charge. Anyway, with that in mind, let's jump in and start with phase oh one. Oh my god. In this phase, you'll have to deal with Aethanel and Cyrannus rather than Nishara herself. Okay. When both of these mini bosses die, the first intermission will begin. You'll want one tank to pick up each of them. When Painful Memories is cast, you need to make sure that both ads are out of line of sight of each other. To do this, we use the console towards the middle of the room. When Longing is cast, the ads need to remain within line of sight of each other. You have quite a long grace period to adjust these mobs after the cast. It's just important that you do so, as otherwise in both cases, they just gain a massive haste and damage increase. They okay. also gain this buff when either one of them dies, so DPS need to make sure they keep an eye on their health and make sure that they die at the same time. Okay. Whilst tanking them, you are going to need Simple. to move them around a bit, because as you fight them, they will drop patches on the ground. These deal light ticking damage and slow players within them. Ideally, you'll want to tank these ads towards the edges of the room, just to keep these patches away from the middle. The tank on Aethanel will be hit with Cold Blast. This deals moderate damage and applies a debuff. That's easy. Once this stacks up easy. to three, you're frozen in place and will be shattered by a large hitting ice shot. That's easy. Healers need to make sure that the tank is top before this happens. Yeah, yeah, easy. As for the easy. tank on Serranus, you'll be hit with Serrated Edge. This is a light ticking physical Joke dodge mechanic. that can be dodged or parried. But the rate to watch out for is the Charge Spear. This is cast by Serranus on a random player, dealing damage to all players on route and exploding dude. once it reaches its target, dealing a burst okay. of damage to that player and then a smaller burst to the raid. You just got to make sure you're not in line with the projectile as it's fired out. Also to be okay. mindful of is the lightning orbs from Aethanel. These land randomly in the room and bounce three times before finally despawning. Being caught by one of these deals a fair amount of damage, so they're best to be avoided. Aethanel also has a chain lightning cast. It doesn't do a hell of a lot of damage, but it can be interrupted, so why not? We just set up a melee rotation to prevent this ever from going through. Okay. As for Queen Ashara in this phase, while she cannot be attacked, she will, however, power down the wards. Okay. You can see which ward is being attacked as it will flash red. We decided to top these up initially on the pool, and then just move a small amount of players to whichever ward was being attacked, just to keep it topped up. These wards are also powered down by the overzealous hulks. This ad will spawn directly in the middle of the room and just make his Those way Those are the to beefy boys. Ward. We have to watch out for Once them. Once he's there, he'll cast Ground Pound, which deals light ticking raid-wide damage, and will remove power from the ward. This ad can be crowd controlled, however once it's done once, it will then become completely immune. So you want DPS to swap to it immediately as it spawns, and then just stun it before ground pound is cast. 
Queen okay. Ashara will also beckon players. This causes your character to move uncontrollably towards the middle of the room for around 8 seconds or so. Okay. Once you reach the middle, you're put in a bubble that will slowly kill you if it's not destroyed. Ooh, By moving right that's to the exciting. edge of the room before this cast begins, you will never reach the middle and therefore you'll never be put in a bubble. And you can also Makes use sense. the patches that the mini bosses have been spawning as they will slow you as you walk across them. Can somebody invite me to a realm with this rare up? is the arcane orbs. These spawn on a timer typically around the middle of the room. Okay. These need to be soaked and completely removed, which takes around five seconds. If you don't do this fast enough, they'll eventually explode, dealing massive raid-wide damage. While soaking them, you will take moderate ticking damage, oh so heaters you need God. to be ready to keep the soaking players topped. Once you've got the hang of all of that, and, and the boss is even out yet, you'll get into the first intermission. What the now, a large fuck set of is this? Orbs will spawn around the middle of the room. Shortly afterwards, everyone in the raid will be given a decree that they must perform. Failing to perform it will apply a stacking dot, which will eventually become unhealable. Suffer demands that you soak an orb, and obey forbids you to soak an orb. Okay. Stand together asks that you stand of at least Wait, one so other player. Wait, so they have player, an add-on? Stand alone asks you to keep away from other players what? entirely. Stay asks you to stand still, and march asks you to keep moving around. Now, on normal mode, you'll only have to perform one of these. You'll only get one decree put on you. Okay, Heroic, good. You can have up to two, and on mythic, you can have up to three. For the most parts, these are pretty easy to deal with by yourself. The issue is that the entire raid gets them, oh my which can God. become rough in situations such as needing to soak an orb by yourself or soaking an orb as a group, as the group players are going to be running towards the solo players, hoping that they've got the exact same thing. This is so there dumb, man. There are a few man. animations that do make this a little bit clearer. Solo okay. guys have lightning surrounding them, and group players have arcane around them. Oh, that's we even made this easier with a weaker orb that was shouted either solo or hug. That's Shortly easy after then. The orbs have been soaked. Phase two will begin. Wait, that's easy. As the phase starts, the middle ward, which has been inactive up you... to this point, will become empowered by the boss. Oh, there's a shara. The energy this has, the oh, more shit. damage the boss will deal, which is bad since the boss is dealing damage randomly to players throughout the phase. Okay. So you've got to keep the power of the ward to a minimum. It's 150 by million it health. And it up. And on top of this, the location of this empowered ward will swap Jesus with others. Jesus Christ, the man. During this phase, indomitable adds will spawn around the edges of the room and move towards the empowered ward. Okay. If they reach it, they'll give it a pretty high amount of energy. All DPS need to be ready to swap to these adds and kill them before they reach it. Okay. As for Azara herself, you'll want to tank her not too far from where you had the mini bosses from phase one. Can somebody invite me to a realm with this rare up? Beckon, but it's been slightly Over changed here. from phase one, as Crack it now forces people to move towards her rather than in the middle of the room. Okay. If you do reach the new destination, instead of becoming encased in a bubble, you will now become mind controlled and gain a large damage shield. People need to damage through that shield to free you from the oh mind control. Oh my god. Now this generally only targets ranged players, but what still by having fuck, her near man? the old patches of goo from phase one, it does make it so people are way less likely to reach her because what they're going to be slowed the by those patches. Now, whatever ward the boss is closest to in this phase, she will slowly drain energy from it. And if she's closest to her empowered ward, she'll okay. slowly give that one energy. We opted to keep of her course. near one most of the time, and we just rotated the raid to stand within it and keep it topped yep. up, never going above five stacks or so. Of course. Now, whilst tanking her, you will be hit by Arcane Jolt, which deals a small amount of arcane damage, but applies a debuff that increases the damage you take from all arcane sources by 5%. This is insane. Now, this stacks up pretty fast, so you'll want tanks to swap as frequently as they can to keep these stacks to a minimum. As for the raid, she'll debuff random players of Arcane Burst. Okay. This debuff just explodes at the end of its duration, dealing massive damage to all players within line of sight of that player. Oh, also, that's easy. You just walk away. Hit by the yeah, that was like in, in, in uh, Mechator. Arcane Burst, she'll apply even more Yeah, it's the debuffs. exact same mechanic. So that's a joke. Joke spell, mechanic, guys. Need to run behind the pillars or easy. Use the console to create a line of sight and let their debuff expire. Okay. This, however, becomes a bit of an issue if you have more than two debuffs, as you can run out of safe places to line a site. I'm gonna be honest, guys. About five minutes ago, I lost track. Wait, th this is. All right. Uh. Okay. Tomorrow's gonna happen. Okay, for so sure. what it's happens in phase one? Do you remember anything in phase one? All right. So in phase one, a bunch of ads come out. Yeah. And uh, you've got to. You've got to DPS the ads while uh -huh. um, s both staying away and stacking on your teammates because and things. taking debuffs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Out of the you take the debuffs right. out of the raid and then it drops the purple, and then um, and then more ads will go to the center, and then you have to kill those ads and then they empower the lock or some shit. Uh huh. And then uh, after that, then you get the intermission or something. 
and then uh, you kill more ads, and then. then Wait, she has there been an intermission? I don't know, dude. Uh oh, is that is that between the ads and her? Holy shit, man! Fortunately, this debuff can be dispelled. So what we decided to do was okay. just have one of the debuff players move behind a pillar and Samuel, be a healer and be dispelled, whilst the other two timed out naturally themselves not too long afterwards, okay. one behind each pillar. Now the raid will also have to line a sight behind the pillar or the console when Arcane Detonation is cast. This cast just deals a massive amount of raid-wide damage to anyone within line of sight of the boss. By having the boss position not too far from either of the pillars or the console was pretty much key here, as it gives enough time for everyone in the raid to move behind before the cast finishes. Okay. Now once you got the hang of doing all that a few times, and the raiders got used to the idea of keeping the empowered wards low, and the normal ones topped up, and the right. boss reaches 70% health, the second right. intermission will begin. Right. This worked the same as the first whilst we were testing, but it appears that the March Decree has been moved to this intermission only in the Dungeon Journal. Oh Aside from that, it should pretty much be the same. Execute your decrees without gaining a shitload of stacks, and not long after the oh orbs have been soaked, Phase 3 will begin. Now this phase plays out mechanically the same as Phase 2, however there are oh a few my new God. things to deal with. Three new ads will spawn from the very, very start. Two Tide Mistresses will stand on top of one of the Ancient Wards each this and is... begin to drain its power. This okay. cast does appear to be interruptible. It also appears that maybe these ads can spawn on top of the empowered ones, which will give the empowered one even more energy. This isn't we even mythic. Can interrupt this. These mistresses will also cast static shock on random players, which makes them just deal pulsing AoE damage around them. And they will also cast chain lightning, which can be interrupted. Okay. Most importantly, the mistresses will shield themselves, making them completely immune to damage and interrupts. The shield is broken by using the other this new is ads, insane. the Myrmidon. This guy will cast Charge Spear on a random player. Uh, this works the exact same way as the one keep watching. by Saranus, Okay. Except if the player that is targeted stands on top of the mistress, okay. it will break the shield on her, allowing people to continue to interrupt and damage them. The only other difference in this phase is that instead of the boss moving the empowered ward around the room, she'll instead replace multiple ancient wards with empowered ones. We're not sure exactly how this works as we never saw it, but by having multiple empowered ones up, it means the boss is going to be doing significantly more damage and means even more soaking for the raid to do. And okay. whilst you are doing that, you'll want to be focusing all of your damage into the mistress, and once she's dead, the Myrmidon before returning back to the Shara. Holy and when shit, either the ads man. Are dead, or when the boss reaches some unknown health percentage, Holy phase fucking four shit, dude. She'll still have Beckon in this phase and will slowly power down the nearest ancient ward as well as having multiple empowered wards. Aside from that, everything is new. Tanks have to deal with Void Touch, which is a new debuff which reduces the incoming healing you receive. The raid have to deal with a beam. We're guessing this is probably a frontal cone targeted at a random player. You also have to watch out for rifts that spawn. Players within these rifts will just take ticking damage. We're going to guess that these slowly fill up the room. But what's most interesting in this phase is the console. At certain points, you'll overload it, applying so many stacks of the debuff to the console that when expire, deal a burst of damage to the raid and also a random effect. What each. is this, man? If they all expire at the exact same time, then you're probably just I... going to wipe. So you need one player to interact with the console and release <laughs> it never the energy ends. over time. It... Now, one of four random effects will happen when you do release any of the energy. One is just that it will flat out do additional damage. Secondly, a random DPS is given a 40 second debuff, which increases their damage, but instantly kills them when it expires. Uh, what? Three is a really nasty dot that is probably only applied to a single player, but potentially. This is gonna. Rate. This is gonna be. Is that one of the ancient eternal in the power? Is more like eternal mechanics. Power. And that's. It's the gonna phase. be an eternal so it stream. Like it's just going to be entirely about space. This is ridiculous. Just min max in the console charges, trying to get rid of them all before okay. they just go off simultaneously. But what do we think? It was a shame it was as hard as it was while we were testing. Yeah. We really didn't get to see everything and things yeah. were pretty broken, like the arcane orbs just instantly one-shotting people and <laughs> the game crashing if any of the phase two ads reached the middle of the room and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Okay. So it was a little bit buggy. Um, but some of the phase four mechanics do sound very interesting, mainly the uh, Titan console. What is this, man? Like, how do you... And just dealing with the random things that happen each time you use it. It's going oh. to be, you know, you might be able to burst through three of them, and then you need to stop for a long time whilst healers catch this back This boss up. has and more mechanics than, like, every boss in ICC out, combined. So insane. It makes your spell cast instant. It gives you Look extra DPS. resource generation. It gives you melee and ranged attack speed haste as well. Whoever what gets that fuck? is just going to be insane. Like, imagine a boomkin with Incarn up. 40 seconds. You're just going to do so much damage. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because at the same time as well, is it possible that every single time that happens? Somebody says, this is what happens whenever enough players complain about easy raid fights. 
yeah, you've got these people that have never done the raids that are saying they're easy. They're like, wow, Mythic's easy. Method did it in two weeks. How could it be hard? Method did it in two weeks. What do you mean? It's a joke. And, and like, they never done the boss fights. They think they're a, the, the bosses are really, really easy. And then there are actually people at the top end that have relationships with people at Blizzard that are like, oh, yeah, this is great. This is what we need. Because you need a book. You need a fucking book. I don't have a book around here. You need a book in order to learn one boss. It's like the Dungeon Journal. It's not even a lie. This is crazy. What class are you playing? Classic? I don't know. If you have the God Pull, because it is completely random effects, right? Yeah. Could you just get that every single time so the entire raid gets a fucking buff and you just plow the boss and that's it, it's over? Is that what World First is going to be? I probably not, right? This is It'll ridiculous. probably be more like, maybe like you have 20 charges and four of those charges are guaranteed to be the damage. Holy four shit, of them are man. Bad dot. So it's, uh, if it's completely random, And there's yeah, another mythic, that, uh, there's a mythic only phase <laughs> uh, too, apparently. Because it's just going to be that's horrific what people are to actually progress that last phase. As for the mythic version of this fight, it's going to be extremely interesting because yeah. there are very little changes in the dungeon journal apart from the fact that they there's an energy wall down the middle of the room, or at least it sounds like it's down the middle of the room, that you cannot cross, because otherwise you just get instantly one shot. Which means you're going to have to have the entire raid spread the entire time. There's so many questions on, like, which wards are going to be empowered and which ones aren't, because potentially you could just get RNG fuck. Potentially, yeah, because half the raid might be cut off from a certain area of the room, and then you need to go and charge it up. Or all the people on that one I, side I, I have don't even previously been soaking, but then they have to do it again, but they already have loads of stacks, so they can't. What do you yeah, even say, dude? It's really just, weird. Maybe, the, maybe it slowly moves. Oh, and imagine? yeah, this is even the it's last raid of the expansion. Oh, so the good. wall is a Halion beam. Is that what you're going to do? Well, because like, they did no mythic testing, we have no idea how it's going to be. But that has suddenly made me way more enthusiastic Holy about this fight. Holy fuck, man. Speaking, the whole idea of micromanaging throughout the fight, the whole energy thing, although it's like somewhat interesting, it doesn't really speak to me personally. I don't really enjoy this is just, that side of things. At least not it's that testing. hard because of DBM. Be yeah, the, the thing is, like the weak auras and DBM and everything... They make it to where players can ignore so many mechanics by not having to think about them because the game plays the, because the add-on plays the game for the player. That Blizzard just bloats the bosses with mechanics in order to offset that, so players still have to deal with things and consciously make decisions. And that's the issue. It's like imagine doing this boss without DBM. Uh, I, I mean, I I can't even imagine it. An irritating side thing that you had to deal with. I think the main reason why you have that frustration is because you have to go quite far away to go do it because tanking the boss in the middle of the room isn't really I just a is a 15 thing. minute video like and it didn't it. even it, talk yeah, about half the faces with certain mechanics especially in it didn't even two, show them line of sight so much it just made them difficult and also if you are tanking the boss in the middle of the room and you do go and soak you get lost anyway because of the pillars. okay yeah so it's like it feels like there's never a good time to go and deal with the wards so dealing with the wards at any point during the fight just feels a bit shitty I'm sure there will be like a good strat that eventually comes out and it just works perfectly the whole fight flows oh, really oh, nicely oh, okay At least testing that whole mechanic yeah i wasn't a massive fan and before we end the video we should probably talk about the intermission as well yeah it's such a clusterfuck it's insane how much yeah. stuff's going on there it's pretty fun though it's a nice little callback to queen's court you know throwing decrees at you again obviously these ones are a little bit more difficult than the ones from queen's court <laughs> yeah this is Especially okay all right you know what this is insane man like i can just imagine where you have to stack up well, march and soak at the same time <laughs> one like, thing's for sure true, man if you see someone in like, full in heads, because some if of you see someone in full sense, you know, some of them you just mythic can't do. What, well, eternal palace gear yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've got to be a good player stack right the yeah, or they have a lot of add-ons gonna sound pretty terrible but i mean i, I guess Oh, oh, the rare's up. The rare's up. Okay, let me kill the rare. Let me kill the rare, and then we're going to move into the lore. Okay, and, and let's talk about... Actually, let's talk about these bosses first. So, what do you guys think about all these bosses uh, so far that we've seen? Uh, I, I personally think that a lot of them... Like, uh, the the thing is that it, it seems like it's too challenging. Like, I mean, there, there are too many mechanics. I, I feel like there is genuinely a point where there are too many mechanics. I need to take a piss. I'll be right back, okay? Just give me a second. Come get for a second. Give me a comment. Yeah, I'll be right back. Hey. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up?
Hey, chat. You suck. <laughs> no, come on. I'm just joking. Come on. Is it? I was a joke, man. What the fuck? Come on. I love you guys sometimes. Mount. Mount right now. Mount right now. Mount God. Mount God right now. Watch this. Watch this, Mount. Mount God. <sighs> this game's stupid, man. Like, I've killed this guy like 15 times. I haven't gotten a fucking mount. Like, I, I, I don't understand, man. Uh, do you, do you need the igniter coil? I don't know if, I don't know what the fuck I need, man. This is just stupid. All, all right, so getting back to the raid. What do I think about the raid overall? I like it. Uh, I, I feel, uh, yeah, I do. I, I mean, just looking at it, it seems like the boss fights are pretty fucking simple. I, I'm a big fan of that, except for the last ones, which are ridiculous. It's like, basically, you're going along, and it's like, everything's fine. Everything's good. It's like taking math class. And you do like, you know, first you understand uh, addition and then uh, subtraction, multiplication, and like division, right? And those are like the real simple ones. And you just basically do that for a while and everything's going fine and there's no problems. And then suddenly, in like ninth grade, now you've got letters. And it's just like, it's this level that like you're walking around thinking that you're good at math and then suddenly algebra happens and you've got letters, you've got dividing fractions, you've got all kinds of bullshit like that, right? Fuck algebra. Yeah, whatever. Six plus. Well, it, it was like, it's like usually ninth grade and it's like eighth grade and seventh grade. Depends on like what kind of like math you're in. But like the point that I'm making, right, is that there's like this huge jump that you make. And I feel like this is the exact same thing. This is like going from normal math to fucking algebra. This is crazy. Holy shit, man. Dividing fractions. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. This is just ridiculous. Don't talk bad about math. No, I'm not saying that, dude. Uh, fifth grade Neo. Listen, like I know everybody wants to talk about how good they are at math. You guys are fucking morons, okay? If people knew that they were good at math, they wouldn't be watching Twitch streams for a while all day. Oh, okay, L let's see here. Let's get this fucking mount. Let's go.